and recognize first and foremost, what are your benefits? What is your employer going to provide you in retirement? Are you going to have access to that health care plan that you had while you were an active employee, even if you have to pay for it yourself? Or will there be some kind of subsidized benefit? The old legacy benefits used to be that, sure, we'll provide health care. Sure, we'll provide you a little uh, subsidy for that benefit, that future promise to pay concept. And that is very rapidly going away, certainly in the corporate world even more rapidly than in the educational world, but it's still declining quite a bit, mostly because with those future promises to pay, there were never any funds set aside. No reserves were set aside. So these huge unfunded liabilities were building up that could obviously not be sustained, especially these days with the growing um, you know, baby boomer demographic moving into retirement with healthcare trends as they are. So clearly there had to be a different way, a different approach. Um, and certainly we also know that our entitlement programs are under extreme financial pressure. No one's um, uh, immune to that fact. And in fact, some surveys say, or some studies say that uh, today, Medicare Part A uh, probably needs to do an immediate increase in uh, payroll taxes or an immediate decrease in benefits being paid to retirees just to keep them on a, a somewhat financial uh, st stable footing. And obviously there's many different choices that are going to be ahead of us, perhaps changing the eligibility age for Medicare, perhaps uh, reducing benefits or increasing cost shares. So we know that individuals will take on more of that burden as we move into retirement with regard to our health care. I was talking earlier with some of my colleagues and I thought, I'm going to interview every single one of my nieces and nephews and decide which one is most capable of taking care of me in retirement. <laughs> And making sure I select the health care advocate and the financial advocate uh, who's going to be able to uh, take care of my diminished capacity when I get there. <laughs> but I, we have to make sure we, we, we pick our health care advocates as well. Uh, you have two minutes left, Barbara. Okay, two minutes. I'm going to move quickly. Well, Keith already covered this whole concept of this shift in a paradigm moving from a defined benefit to a defined contribution approach.